Hello, hello, welcome. Hi. <laughs> Good evening and welcome to this AZ night. The first AZ night of 2018. There might be some people coming in still, so I would advise you to come a little bit closer to the center. So people sitting on the edges, you can surely move a little bit closer together. Thank you. <laughs> there is one person moving. So um, this is already the fifth night, the fifth AZ night in the series. And these AZ nights are meetups for makers, thinkers and students of the creative industry. They meet with different speakers with a specific expertise or artistic practice to talk about the chosen theme. And the theme is always chosen um, because we think it could spark an interesting discussion um, to broaden our perspective and that it can inspire our practice in the arts. We already discussed the future of education, different perspectives on engagement, the art of presenting, the relation between art and money, and how to organize yourself. And tonight's theme is dark ecology, artistic encounters in the Anthropocene. And this could actually be the darkest edition so far. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so far, or maybe even the darkest edition in the series of AZ Nights, period. And here we are, thanks to Z33, Architectuurwijzer, PXL Med School of Arts, Luca School of Arts Campus Seamine, U Hasselt, U Hasselt Faculty of Architecture and Art, in a joint effort, uh, and they make these evenings possible. My name is Katharina Smets. I'm, a, I'm an independent radio producer, and I'm also a PhD researcher in the arts, in the art of uh, narrative audio which is short for making podcasts and uh, <laughs> performative um, narrative pieces. Well, I have been quite concerned with the environment um, since I was a child. Um, I was always wearing um, a WWF t-shirt, um, WWF t-shirt with seals on it. And I also was a big fan of Seabird. I don't know if anybody knows Seabird. Yes, thank you, generation. Um, Yes, and but still now I'm quite concerned of eating locally. Um, I'm a very, very lazy vegetarian for several years. Um, I always feel quite guilty when I buy a new iPhone. I feel even guiltier when I take the plane. Um, but I'm wondering if is all this guilt and anxiousness, is it actually, well, worthwhile? Or even was it? actually quite true, this anxiousness, and is there any hope? Well, but before we start, before we start, we all got a test tube. I think Christoph has a few test tubes more. You all got a test tube, yes? You haven't opened it yet, quite important, because there is a, well, there is a slight surprise connected with it, so it would be, yeah, so keep it Keep it closed. So far, we will tell you in time when to open it. Um, please don't drink it yet. The consequences could be quite bad. Not that I haven't warned you so far. So don't take any risks. So we will finish tonight at a quarter to ten, more or less. And there will be two talks. And in the beginning and after, there will be um, a Q&A. You will have the chance to ask your questions. Um, this evening will be in English, because one of our speakers is uh, American. And um, if you don't understand anything, please raise your hand, uh, ask your question. Um, we would be happy to explain a little bit further. We will finish. Um, this evening with a performance, a performance that I hope will bring us some hope, uh, hopefully. Welcome. Have a seat. So tonight we will talk about something that is often considered a controversial theme. Um, like I said, this AZ night might be quite dark. Um, you might not know this, but we actually live in an Anthropocene right now. It is the age in which humanity became the prevailing force. Nature is no longer shaping humanity, but we are shaping the world. So the term Anthropocene is proposed as a name for a geological period in which humans have became, become the major force. 
And the word Anthropocene contains a big story in itself. Living arrangements that look, took millions of years to put into place are being undone in the blink of an eye. Some scientists argue that the rate of biological extinction is now several hundred times beyond its, its historical levels. We might lose a majority of all species, a majority of all species by the end of the 21st century. When I read this, I don't know, um, if this is true, this is quite shocking. Um, there is a massive increase in carbon dioxide, nothing surprising there. Methane and nitrate emissions into the atmosphere. There is industrialized agriculture, of course, uh, to blame for that. Min mineral extraction, petroleum-driven production, and globalized shipping transportation networks. And they all outplaced um, all other natural rhythms of life. In other words, we are ruining the earth. Um, and everything on it. And the question is, is it reversible? What can we do about it? Um, scientists, writers, artists are in a state of shock. Perhaps, yes, the artist uh, says yes. Um, but how can we do something about this total ruination of the Earth? The term Anthropocene has been and is hyped and discussed, but one thing is sure, it is here and it won't go away. So, we practitioners in the arts, how can we relate to this concept in, an, in a constructive way? And are there any new possibilities? Is there any hope? I really hope so. So, but to enlighten us, we have invited uh, Christoph Franken, Sue Speet, and Chris Verdonk, and the musician Innerwoud. Um, to begin with Christoph Franken, this uh, AZ Night theme is actually inspired by um, the doctoral research The Sustainist Gaze by this photographer, Christoph. Can you join us? Um, he's, a, he's a person who gave you the test tube. Uh, in the beginning of the evening. And uh, together um, with Christophe, we invited philosopher and curator Sue Spade. She curates exhibitions in which she presents works of ecologists, designers, and scientists um, who think about and try to solve ecological problems, uh, amongst other things. And also, together with Christophe, we invited uh, multi-talented artist Chris Verdonk. Chris Verdonk. For many years now, uh, Chris is fascinated by the relationship between the human and the machine. Um, and he shows his research in performances, in architecture, in dance, um, in installations. And because this theme is so hard and complex, um, we try to bring a little moment of peace then in the end with Innerwoud. But yeah, um, Christoph, maybe you can have a seat because we will start this evening with a little game. Or no, maybe you can be my little assistant, sorry. Okay. Yes. <laughs> um, so before we... Um, yeah, before we start off uh, talking uh, why you actually chose this team for this evening, I have a list of questions. Um, and it's a, it's a list of questions for the audience. Uh, it's a little test. It's not really super complicated. You just have to raise your hand. It's not super scary. Maybe a little bit confrontational. Are you ready, Christoph? I'm ready. Yes. <laughs> Who is attending an AZ night for the first time tonight? Okay, that's okay, it's quite easy. Who's, who is a maker? Okay. Who's a thinker? Chris is not a thinker. Um, who uh, heard the term Anthropocene for the first time? Okay. Um, who loves taking long showers? <laughs> um, who recycles their waste? Yeah, me too. Who buys second-hand clothes? Yeah, I mean, not really. Um, who, sh who thinks we should stop buying stuff? Yeah. Who is a vegetarian because of eco-critical reasons? Oh, not so, not so many. Um, who worries about climate change? <laughs> I think almost everybody, right? Um, who loves taking a bath every day? 
Ooh, ooh, ooh. Yeah. Um, who thinks Trump's is, Trump is right and climate change is a hoax? Oh, there is somebody? No, oh, it was a joke. Um, who thinks the Earth will be saved in time? OK, almost, almost half of the audience. Who thinks it is too late and humanity will ruin the Earth? Christoph? <laughs> OK. Um, <clears throat> who thinks the human race will become extinct? In the end, right? <laughs> who thinks capitalism should be blamed for all of this? OK. Who, should, who thinks the bio-industry should be blamed for climate change? Bio-industry, like um, f cow farms, uh, big, big industrialized cow farms, for example. Um, yes? OK. Um, who thinks everybody is to blame? Yeah, true. Um, who feels responsible for what happens to future generations? <laughs> Christoph. <laughs> yeah, Chris also sighing. Who thinks the situation is not, not that bad, but the media ruin all positive perspectives? OK, a few people. Who thinks the plastic soup is an inspiring topping, topic to use in an artistic practice? Chris. Okay. Who tries to engage with these topics in their art artistic practice? So who uses, for example, the term Anthropocene in your artistic practice? Okay, a few people. Okay, last one. Who feels these themes are interesting but don't fit in your artistic research? I see two hands on one person, that is not fair, but I, um, I see your point. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Now we all know a little bit more on where we stand and what maybe the nature of tonight will be. Um, Christophe Franke, could you tell me, um, you are a researcher uh, in the group Interactions at Lucas School of Arts, and you research the relationship between humanity and the environment, and what remains of human activity. Um, as I mentioned before, um, this night is actually inspired by your doctoral research, the, sustain, the sustainist gaze. What does it actually mean, the sustainist gaze? Uh, the sustainist gaze um, is actually it comes from the sustainable design movement, which is a critical design um, force, which uh, is a manifesto. And I took the manifesto from sustainable design and brought it into photography. And okay, because uh, you are actually a photographer, you studied photography. Yes. Yeah, I studied photography, mm -hmm. but I've always had a strong interest in design, photography, ecology, um, and biology. And with my PhD, everything comes together. Nice, yes. And, it's, and it has to do with actually a human hand. Well, the human, um, the human how do I say it? Uh, well, the human presence, actually, um, or what humans did to the world? Is it, is it a...? I've always had a strong interest in lot, uh, the relation between mankind and their environment and how they're influencing Earth mm -hmm. and vice versa, and how nature comes back to, to take over when uh, humans left of our leave. Okay, so, so there is a little yeah. interesting points. Because when I, when I hear the term sustainist gaze, I think about something that is left, that is sustained. No, it's actually um, more like in a sustainable way of, pra of doing a practice. Okay. Like um, I used the sustainist design as a manifesto and uh, it made me doubt the digital work process I did. Um, and uh, it prompted me to return to search for alternatives okay. that are more uh, ecological. And uh, in such a way, I came out to, a, to a process which is called the Antotai process. It's a 19th century photographic process. And uh, it may, I can make prints out of plants and berries. OK, so you, you, you reused actually uh, it back in your practice as, a, uh, as an artist as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. How is that actually the link between your research and your artistic practice? Is it doable? 
actually. Is it? <laughs> so the link between your, um, because I'm an, uh, an, a researcher in the arts myself and I have these doubts sometimes about, okay, I'm researching in theory, in academics, these things. How do you, do you translate them back to your artistic practice? You already gave an example of, for example, using berries in your photographic process, mm -hmm. actually, yeah. yeah actually, uh, my research made me rethink my artistic practice as a whole. And uh, I started to combine all my interests. Um, and it was an intriguing and fascinating journey uh, because it opened up so many things and so many new tools mm -hmm. in which I can tell my stories. Yeah. You chose the theme for tonight. Mm -hmm. Why? Um, because ecology was certainly one of the greatest factors um, driving my research. And it was during a lecture in London that I was first confronted with the term Anthropocene. And the word immediately had a big impact on me. And since then it has not let me go. And it made many things clear and unclear at the same time. And the word has a form of urgency in it, but the urgency is not clear. So it's not, it's a abstract urgency. Mm -hmm. And it's a concept of many meanings. It's a multiple and therefore difficult to understand. But it's also easy to abuse, the term Anthropocene. And that's why it's also a dangerous word. And what is the, what is the danger of abuse? Why, why could it be dangerous? Because some scientists believe that uh, they could um, attract geoengineering. So they go um, engineer the whole earth. So they think that the earth is in danger and that they have to save the earth, but from a man-made perspective. So they're going to um, launch satellites or a shield around earth to tackle some climate change. Mm -hmm. And what is your perspective? Uh, I think we have to return to, or we have to listen to to the earth and to nature and to become more one with nature. Instead of finding solutions for nature, we have to look for the solutions that nature can teach us. We have to return to a certain state? Maybe. Or be more humble towards nature, maybe? I, th I think we definitely need to be more humble. And okay. we are nature and we are not mankind. Okay. This is a quite... Um, interesting start. What do you hope will happen tonight? What do you hope we will <laughs> hear in the discussions or take home with us? Well, I think this uh, evening is an invitation to celebrate the idea of the Anthropocene. And we must dare to give this dark vision a place in our lives. And we must embrace the unrest and depression that it's maybe causing us. And maybe depression is the most accurate way of experience this current ecological disaster. And this confrontation with our dark side as human beings can make us look for alternatives. And I think in alternatives in the way we think, see, and produce. You gave us all a test tube. I might take yes. one. Yes, um, you may take one. Yes, OK, <clears throat> I'm going to take one. So has anybody guessed what's in it, actually? Oh, somebody knows? Yeah, okay, but maybe, um, yeah, what do you think it is, actually? <coughs> Christoph's special fluid. It's true. Uh, it's true. <laughs> I think that this might be one of your students, maybe. Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so what is it? Well, it's a photographic emulsion that's also drinkable, but I have to explain... Um, a little more, because Anthropocene is a difficult and abstract concept. Um, there is a, also a picture yeah. appeared <laughs> behind us, yeah? I think it's necessary to make it personal. And um, I made an image just for tonight. It's an image from the Ford factory in Genk. And the image shows the demolition of the Ford factory. And it's an, an important historical and symbolic uh, moment. And the closure of Ford in 2015 was a social tragedy. And at its peak, the factory produced almost half a million cars each year. And we recycled some of their tires. 
Um, after the closure, the company sold its grounds for one symbolic euro to the city, but the costs involving with cleaning up the site with pollution are estimated at $12 million. Uh, $12 million. And even after the factory is demolished and disappeared, traces of the pollutants um, will remain on the site, although invisible. And establishment of metal processing companies and other heavy industrial br branches brought economic development to the city, but also had severe ecological consequences. And it just shows on a micro scale how complex the links are between ecology, economy, and uh, the social fabric. And there's no, there's no single perspective. We need all angles to, to see these issues. And the image that you're seeing is made of a light sensitive organic emulsion that you're holding in your arms right now, in your hands right now. And the emulsion is based on berries that are hand picked from this location. And thanks to the 19th century anthotype process, the landscape itself generates the image and creates an interesting relationship between image and place. And plants that survive in polluted areas absorb heavy metals in its system. And they absorb heavy metals from soil and, uh, and the air. And they store them in their system. And in this way, the pollutants, and thanks to the antotype process, the heavy metals will be in the print itself. Mm -hmm. And if we drink the emulsion, it also becomes part of our food chain, on our food chain. Yeah. So the photographic emulsion is not only light sensitive, but also drinkable. And I've researched uh, the relation between image quality and taste. And I can assure you that the taste is really good and sweet. Uh, and the recipe for this emulsion is based on old liquor recipes and contains hand-picked berries, uh, Geneva and sugar. However, the berries used have been harvested on this side. So they may contain nickel, chromium, manganese, and zinc. It's not deadly in an instant. But prolonged exposure to these substances may cause health problems. And these metals are tasteless, odorless, and can therefore end up in your body almost unimpended. The juice of the berries is diluted, um, making the concentration of heavy metals uh, probably lower than when you walk a few days in the area. But drinking the act itself makes you a conscious carrier of the anthropocene. And I hope the drink will let the unrest settle into yourself. So let this drink be a potion, a liquid with healing, magical, and poisonous properties, a potion to the Anthropocene. Let it be dark, uncanny, sinister, and sweet. So thank you, Krista, for this proposed toast. So. Um, I, was, I heard about this before the talk, of course, and I didn't know, shall I drink this? Shouldn't I drink this? And I thought maybe it has um, the same amount of poison as an apple that I didn't properly washed. Mm -hmm. So and I thought, OK, actually, poison is all around us, and I maybe don't, don't see it. Or if I stand um, too close to the ring in Antwerp, maybe I have the same amount of poison in my body. It's possible. Mm -hmm. OK. <laughs> So, Christophe, you propose a toast. What yes. shall we toast on? The Anthropocene. <laughs> on the Anthropocene. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> it's your own responsibility if you're doing this. <laughs> AZ Nights is not responsible. <laughs> you will notice the effects in 70 years. <laughs> <laughs> so, thank you very much, Christophe. So, <laughs> this was quite the introduction. Um, it's actually quite good, quite sweet. Wow, what have I done? <laughs>